Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to be talking about Andrew Yang's perfect cabinet and who the very, very best selection for his Secretary of State would be when he drops into the presidency on January 20th, 2021. And that person is Felicia Day. All right, now Felicia Day is an actor, she is a producer, and she is a writer. But beyond being all three of those successfully, she also has um, a collection of elements that make her the perfect choice for Secretary of Education. All right, so let's talk about Felicia Day. So Felicia Day is an actor. She acted in um, Supernatural, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Eureka, okay? Now, one of the things I think is really unique about Felicia Day is uh, she's um, she has many attributes that would make it that would make it clear that she's going to be a good actress, right? But one of the things I really like about her, and one of the elements that's really important about her, is she really exceeds expectations at almost every point possible, right? So I think uh, Felicia Day would have had no difficulty remaining an actress and just doing acting work, right? Uh, she's had a career that's been on a you know on a rise for a long time, and the reality is when she was faced with continuing to do acting, she then branched into producing. She produced her own show, which was called The Guild. It had multiple seasons. It was highly successful. Uh, you can watch it now on Netflix. She produced the whole thing, created it, the whole nine. And then, in addition, to, uh, and then in addition to that. She created a company called Geek and Sundry, which did um, a lot of nerd-related content and would cover different nerdy topics from multiple uh, interviewers and uh, artists' perspective. It was really unique, really special. Um, so Geek and Sundry was one of them. Um, one of my favorite, um, uh, one of my favorite Dungeons and Dragons uh, content pieces comes out of came out of Geek and Sundry, which was Critical Role was briefly uh, related to uh, Geek and Sundry. Um, and then finally there's a, uh, there was a, she produced a show called Tabletop, which was tabletop role playing games, uh, tabletop board games, tabletop games, which she specifically created this show. It was hosted by Will Wheaton, very successful, one of the best shows on. If, if a game gets picked for tabletop, that game goes through the roof in sales. Uh, and you know, basically this is just three projects that she spun up from, you know, from nothing and completely produced herself, right? And, uh, you know, and produced initially, uh, and some of them were sold. <coughs> um, but all of these were, you know, successful, um, successful ventures, which is really saying a lot, uh, you know, especially when you already have a job as an actor, right? And then last, she's a writer, right? So she wrote Dragon Age Memoirs, which was its own writing project that she was in charge of. Uh, it was connected to a video game, but she did the writing for it. And I think it's really important because, you know, after she had shown success in acting, shown success in producing, she also did some writing, right? So she is like a triple threat, but not for singing, dancing, and acting. She's a, tri a triple threat for just business achievement, right? So she's a really incredible person, uh, has an incredible amount of talent. Um, and I think... You know, successful business person, uh, successful Holly, you know, being able to get past the so the Hollywood, um, you know, uh, crucible, make it through in acting, and then also on top of that, adding the skill set of being a solid, respectable writer, that's pretty incredible, right? And, um, and I think all of those would speak well for her being on the cabinet, right? But the reality is there's, there's some specific elements that I think make her ideal, and those elements are, like I said, she's a good business person. She's also a mother, right? So she was a mother. Uh, by the way, the things I'm going to talk about now, I read her um, her autobiography. And she talked in depth about these things in her autobiography. And just really explained, you know, um, a lot about herself. And I think a lot of these elements really make her really unique and perfect for specifically... Um, you know, for Secretary of State. So she was a mother when, when being a mother was incredibly difficult. None, none of those other uh, achievements that I talked about, being an actor, being a successful actor, successful producer, or a successful writer, you know, motherhood is not often attached to those things 
simultane to all three of those things simultaneously, right? So she knows, I think she knows a lot about modern motherhood. Like, what is it like to be a mother when you have a whole lot of things that you are trying to juggle, right? The other thing is, <laughs> she has struggled with mental health issues, and she's been really open and honest about this, and has talked about how her mental health issues have really, uh, you know, essentially made it very difficult for her to achieve the things she did, but she's found a path through to both, you know, restore her health at the same time as continuing to produce. And I think, you know, that's an incredibly, uh, that's sought after by almost everybody today, right? That's really, really common. People want to be mentally strong and at the same time achieving and not allow mental health issues to stop them from achieving, which really, um, she hasn't. So she's found a path forward on that very unusual thing. The other thing is, uh, she really exceeds expectations. Like, like I said, when, when, when somebody tries to box her in, when, you know, when, when she saw that, you know, she was only going to be acting and that she was going to have, you know, only a limited amount of roles, you know, when she, when she was being, you know, pigeonholed for particular roles, she created the guild herself so that she could have something which, where she was creating her own roles, right? And so exceeding expectations, again, it's something that we really need in modern life and a lot, a lot of people. The other, the other thing is, is she is a champion for womanhood, for being a, a woman and being a modern woman. Um, I really think she's been a champion and proven herself as a champion for, um, for womanhood, right? And so all of these things together, in my opinion, that is a perfect stew for a modern Secretary of State. And Frank, I'm sorry, excuse me, a modern Secretary of Education. And frankly, we, right now, we need somebody that perfect in that role. And the reason why is uh, right now we have um, Secretary Betsy DeVos, and there's a lot of stuff to fix, right? And the thing is, um, again, one of the things I want to just remind you is like, why wouldn't you pick you know, some really good principal, right? Well, the reality is I, I think all of these cabinet roles, the secretary roles, you need somebody who's charismatic, you need somebody who's intelligent, somebody who can get things done, and they're going to connect a network of network uh, of experts. They're going to take in a lot of information and then they're going to make decisions based on those on those um, those on the information that comes in. Whereas I think, you know, people who are experts within these fields, more and more we've reached a point where, you know, we really are not trusting experts within specific fields. And one of the reasons why is today, a lot of these expertises go so deep, you are very, very likely to get someone who is myopic and might very well focus on one thing, right? And so th this is really an, a new dawn. There's been a, really a shattering of trust among experts and like overall the American people and a, a lot of others just really don't have the trust in experts that they used to. And... Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not sure we're at a point where we can restore that. I think going forward, especially in these high-profile positions, we want people who are used to being in high-profile positions, not experts who are, who are, in my opinion, are quite likely to have a myopic focus and then be brought into a, a, a kind of a high spotlight, you know, position and not be ready for that spotlight. Whereas, you know, the people that I've been bringing forward, they, they are quite aware of a spotlight and they know how to deal with it, Right. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm choosing the people I am for the cabinet. I really think Felicia Day is the absolute perfect choice for Andrew Yang's perfect cabinet with her as Secretary of Education. Uh, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear what you think. Who do you think would be the best uh, choice for Andrew Yang as Secretary of Education? I'm sure it's no one but Felicia Day. Uh, I, but I'd love to hear your comments. Please let me know in below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.